Strategic Outreach for military paramilitary, special marshals, and other security agencies to deal with encounters. Our subject is acceptable service. That is the subject that we have been asked to speak upon. And our text is taken from Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 5 to 8. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. It says, Servants, be obedient, that, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born or whether he be free. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Our objective of this teaching this afternoon very briefly is to understand what it takes to serve acceptably in whatever service we are found to serve acceptably before God. As people in the paramilitary and military setting we come under a lot of pressure and if we do not understand what to do, we might find ourselves at the end of the day having performed physical duty and failed before God. Our assignment is to trust God that while we'll do our duty on the earth, we will not be failures before God at the end of the day. Somebody say loud amen. amen. How do I serve so that I can serve acceptably? Number one, Serve as unto the Lord, not unto the people, not even just unto the government. Serve as unto the Lord. That is what the scriptures tell, told us. Serve as unto the Lord, as the servants of Christ. Serve as unto the Lord. The meaning of that is serve as somebody who is answerable to God. Not just answerable to the people, not just answerable to the agency or the institution we are serving. Serve as unto the Lord. This work I am doing, I may have been given the job by the government, I may be collecting my salary from the government, but the one I'm really serving is God. Number two, serve in obedience. He said, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the first. Serve in obedience. Obedience of instructions. Obeying laid down principles. Obeying laid down guidelines. There is nothing God hates like rebellion. And I say to people, the only law we are licensed to disobey is any law that is against the law of God. That is against the law of God. That is against the common wealth of humanity. Otherwise, obedience is the secret of the blessing of God, both in this time and in the time to come. He said in Proverbs chapter 28 and in verse 20, he said the faithful man will abound, that's the obedient person, will abound in the blessing. So we serve as unto the Lord, number one. Number two, we serve in obedience, number three. Serve in the fear of God. He said we are to serve in the fear of God. We live in a generation today where the fear of God has rapidly disappeared. Serve, he said, he said, servant be obedient 
to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling. Serve in the fear of God. What is the meaning of that? Serve with a conscience that is alive. A conscience that is awake. A conscience that is, that is there. We live in a world today where we have a lot of people who don't have any conscience anymore. Their consciences are dead and seared. But we must serve, if it is going to be acceptable, we must serve in the fear of God with a conscience that is awake, not a conscience that is dead. Number four, serve with the singleness of heart and focus. Singleness of heart. He said in singleness of your heart. Singleness of heart and focus. What is the meaning of that? You never allow the distractions of life to destroy your assignment in life. You never allow the distractions of life to temper with your life's assignment and service. The challenges of home should be left at home. While duty at work should be squarely handled at work. A law of focus says, anywhere you are, be there. If you are here per time, be there. If you are on duty, be on duty. If you are at home, be at home. That is the law of focus. He said with singleness of heart. Distraction is always the enemy of distinction. And we have a lot, of, a lot of things in this life that call for our attention. Our service is not acceptable if it is not done in the singleness of heart. Number five, serve without eye service or men-pleasing tendencies. He said we should serve not with eye service. That's right. Or as men pleasers. Most people's target today is to what extent they can do the right thing when they are being watched. And then they immediately begin to do the wrong thing when nobody is watching. How they can appear good to superiors in the presence of those superiors. No, not with eye service. Not as men pleasers. The only one we are qualified to serve and to please at all times, at all costs, is our master. And once you, are, you, you please God, in all probability, you'll be at peace with every other person. Not with eye service. Not as men pleasers. Number six, serve the will of God. Serve the will of God. He said, doing the will of God, then from the heart. Serve the will of God. What is the will of God? The will of God is the display of the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when, when we say serve with the will of God, it means serve with the love of God. Kind consideration for humanity. The decision to make a positive difference on the lives of the people. You serve the will of God. You serve with the love of God. You serve with kind consideration. And to make a positive difference on the lives of people. Number seven, serve from the heart. I says, as servants of God, doing the will of God from the heart. Serve from the heart. Serve from the heart means serve with authenticity. Don't do things, let's not do service mechanically. Serve authentically. Let it not just, just, just mechanical, lifeless. I've seen traffic control officers at times just enjoying their life. I, I, I think I came across a traffic control officer some time ago. He controls the traffic with his hand, with his <laughs> other hand, with his head, with his leg, you know, and so on and so forth. This guy is just, is just living his life, enjoying his life. 
Let it come from, let it be authentic. Don't let it be synthetic. Don't let it be plastic. Let the service we do involve who we are. In my own line of duty, I serve with all my life. If, I'm, if it is time to dance, I dance like a baby. If it is time to worship and weep before God, I weep before him like a baby. If it is time to preach with force and authority, I do, do all that. We serve from the heart. Let there be authenticity in what we do. Number eight, serve with goodwill. Goodwill. Wish others well. Life is complementation, not competition. Serve with goodwill. With others, wish others well. Sow the seeds of goodwill in the lives of others. That is how to fare well in life. It is when we wish others well that we can fare well in life. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 said, What things soever you will that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Anything you want, to, you want people to do to you, do to them. Zig Ziglar said, you can achieve anything you want in life if you can assist as many other people as possible to achieve what they want. Make a positive contribution to the life of your contemporaries. Be a good team player. That is what it means to wish others well. Be a good team player. A good team player. I heard that a champion team is superior to a team of champions. What is the difference? Look at a football team. And the football team is, is filled with people who can play for Arsenal and play for Chelsea and play for all the top um, clubs in the world. But they are not flowing with each other. They are not united. Even though they are individually stars, their team will fail. They are a team of champions, not a champion team. A champion team is a team where all the team members know that the winning of the team is superior to the winning of individuals. And I believe that as we function in that capacity, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Serve with goodwill. Number nine, serve with joy and gladness. We live in a world today that is filled with depression. If you turn on the news, it's filled with depression. Terrible things happening everywhere. And people are genuinely in need of joy, in need of rejoicing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. He said, because you served not the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, then you will serve your enemies. Somebody say, God forbid. And so we are to serve with, with, with joyfulness, with excitement. Somebody is just down. Maybe your, 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 your excitement on duty can change somebody's life and change somebody's atmosphere. Your appearance, your look, the look on your face. Your outlook. Somebody may be suicidal and they encountered you. And that encounter changed their lives. For some of us, you are the final bus stop for some people. And I believe that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number 10, and this final, serve with eternity in view. Serve with the end of life in mind. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of a man. Why? For God shall bring every walk, every preaching walk, every pastor's walk, every road safety walk, every, every civil defense walk, 
every immigration, every walk into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We serve with eternity in mind. We serve with the end in mind. Because everything we do on the earth, we shall be accountable before God. Somebody say aloud, amen. amen. When you have served acceptably, what do you expect to see from God? When you do this service, not as unto man, but as unto the Lord. I'm working, you know, government employed me, but I want to do it until God is happy with me. What do I expect? Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26, he said, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of your days I will fulfill. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. If you serve the Lord well, he releases blessing upon you. I prophesy upon someone here today, the blessing of the Lord rests upon you now. Everything that is called it, it, it's a trace of affliction in your body, the Lord take it out of your body. I declare you will fulfill your days. You will not be cut short with a, a criminal's bullet. Fulfill your days in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare every expectation of your life, they shall come to pass. You believe that? Say louder, amen. You believe that? Say loud, most amen. You believe that? Say louder, believe us, amen. Stand up on your feet with a louder shout of amen. Lift up your hands and give him the praise and the honor for acceptable service. Father, thank you and thank you for acceptable service. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration because you are God. You are God. There is not one like you. El Shaddai, El Ayon, Mekadesh. We worship you, we honor you, we adore you. Be thou glorified, be thou honored, and be thou adored in Jesus' precious name. Two prayers for quickly we are going to pray. Say, Father, I receive the grace to serve acceptably. To serve at my point of duty acceptably. Lift your voice and say that to God. I receive the grace to serve acceptably. To serve you acceptably. To serve you acceptably. The grace to serve acceptably. I receive that grace right now. I receive the grace to serve acceptably. 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 I receive that grace to serve you acceptably. I receive that grace to serve acceptably. In Jesus' precious name. Lift up your voice and tell the Lord, Father, anywhere I have served before unacceptably, I ask for mercy. Anywhere I have served with men pleasing eye service, or I have served grudgingly and not excitedly, any time I have served you without the fear of God, I am sorry, I ask for mercy. Lift your voice and speak to God. I ask for mercy, Lord, where I have served unacceptably, where I have served unexcitedly, where I have served grudgingly, I receive mercy. I receive mercy. I receive forgiveness. Where I have served unacceptably, I receive mercy. I receive mercy. I receive mercy. I receive mercy. Where I had served unacceptably, where I had served unacceptably, I receive mercy. I receive mercy. I receive forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, while we are in this mood, our eyes are closed. You are here, you are saying, after, you are saying to me, Pastor, I've heard this message today. I want to hand over my life to Jesus. I want my sins forgiven. I want to serve like the way you have said, to serve the Lord and not to just serve men. I want to serve God and serve him acceptably. I want to surrender my life to Jesus and I want my sins forgiven. I want today to mark a new day for me. Anywhere you are, pray this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, Louder, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need your help. Say it louder. Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. From today, I go forward ever, backward never. 
the grace to live for you, I receive it. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.